Welcome back everyone. Here we go. Hey dad. Yeah. Thanks for beating me as a child. No problem, son. We need to bring back this tradition before it's too late. Fun times, huh? Money sucks, you're probably never gonna buy a house. Your degree is useless and left you in mountains of debt. You're nowhere near capable of providing for a wife and kids, and you can't imagine yourself settling down with any of the women in your age bracket anyway because Disney princess programming and feminism has left them fundamentally unwifable. You've grown up in a culture which has celebrated every other form of identity besides you and in exact proportion to how much they're not you to the point that now schools and companies can hire based on that metric. All the while being told you can't complain or notice any of it because of how privileged you are. And if you don't know how privileged you are, it's because of your privilege. Even though you're basically a debt slave with minimal hope of a financial and familial future because your economy and culture has abandoned you. So a lot of dudes just checked out and started like smoking weed and playing video games. Some of the other ones went to countries where they like white people and men. Like Thailand, I guess. And some of them were like, you know what, this is a good challenge. None of it makes sense. It's all going to shit. Uh, but fuck it, I want a big house, and if you come on my land, I'm gonna shoot you with guns. I want a bunch of kids and a wife churning butter. I'm gonna make it happen, you fucks. I hate to admit it, but this is becoming the norm. And I don't think it's too late, though. Something can still be done. What do you guys think of Men's Circle? Have you heard of it? Let me know in the comments. This is for those of you who are awake. I think I've been awake for five to six years now. Partially awake prior to that. Um, I have over time through research realized that everything I was taught in school, our history, was a lie. All of it. It's all a lie. We haven't been told the truth about anything. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't believe anything we've been told is the truth. It, it, it is so far off from the truth, it's scary. Um, who else on the side of being awake? Like, if you know you're awake, you know you're awake. But who else on the awake side are having a really hard time interacting with people who are completely asleep? Like, I have, I can't, I can't just get together with people and be like, oh yeah, the weather is uh, sports. Oh, let's yeah. How's the kids? And not talk about the fact our country's being invaded. We are losing, this is the fall of Rome. We are living through the fall of Rome right now. Our country is being invaded. Our government has been taken over. There was a coup involved. The people running our government right now are all paid off and corrupt, every one of them. I don't care, Congress, Senate, House, it doesn't matter. I think they're, most of them are compromised. Um, they're not representing the people at all. And I'm just at the point where I want something to happen. I'm done. I'm done. I can't. I can't. I get up and go to work every day. I'm like, why am I doing this? What is this for? So it can all end next week when our government decides to fucking poison us or whatever they're gonna do. I, I just. <sighs> it's frustrating. It's so frustrating. Make something happen. I don't care. It can be bad. Have the UN show up and knock on my door and arrest me. What, whatever you, whatever you motherfuckers have planned for us, let's just do it. Because I, this waiting game is getting really old. I'm tired. I'm really tired. If something is going to happen, let it happen already. Get it over with. It's like the Berenstain Bears being Berenstain Bears, fruit of the loom with and without the cornucopia, even the memory. I used to think that uh, Mandela effects only happen in the US or in the Western countries, but I've seen this one Mandela effect that talks about the human heart, that it used to be in the left-hand side of your chest, on the left side of your chest, but all of a sudden it's now in the middle. That's how I remember it, on the left side. How about you?
Okay, so remember the guy who created the Hollow Earth theory? Yeah. Okay, so the guy, Admiral Byrd, flew over Antarctica and claims to see a hole in the Earth. And they actually found his diary, and he actually explains in detail what he saw. So he wrote in his flight log when he was flying over Antarctica, he actually saw green mountain ranges. And next to the mountain range, he saw, like, green valleys with a river going through it. How is there green mountain ranges in the middle of the Arctic? Exactly. So he said there's a lot of grass and a lot of green hills. And he even claims that he saw a woolly mammoth there. And the thermometer inside his plane said that the temperature was 74 degrees Fahrenheit in the Arctic. And I don't know how he explains this, but he said that he saw a literal city inside the whole of the earth. And when he came back from his journey, he was forced not to talk about it and will probably never know what he actually saw. Well, he was given the Medal of Honor and no one knows why. Exactly. But relating to that, have you seen the crazy sinkhole they found in China? Whether you're a flat earther or not, as long as you do not believe that the earth is a globe, the hollow earth theory doesn't sound far-fetched at all. I don't think that uh, there is a mantle in the middle of the earth. I think there's more to what they're telling us. And if there's only a way for us to know it, to know for sure, I take that chance. Y'all, this is one of the cases that I just cannot get over. I've seen a lot of people talk about this. Um, this happened around 2020. But this is just one of those stories that I feel like a lot of people need to listen to because a lot of people get fascinated by these things and these people and get obsessed with this stuff and just go poking into stuff that they're not educated with or that is not meant for them. So if you are not familiar with this story, I'm about to let y'all know what happened. So this 19-year-old self-proclaimed Wiccan decided that she wanted to hex her black girlfriend, yes, her black girlfriend, and to reach out to Papa Legba. If you're not familiar with Papa Legba, I've made um, a video about him a while ago. You can go check that out on my page, but I can make a new updated version. But Papa, he is the spirit to the crossroad. That is his job for the connect with the gateway to the spiritual world. So if you've reached out to this black spiritual deity, to hex your black girlfriend. So first of all, many people that I guess like she knew a lot of different people that did voodoo and practices and stuff like that, that did voodoo, they warned her. They said, you're not educated on this. You're, you're just somebody that's probably watched American Horror Story and seen where they portrayed Papa Legba and got a little obsession with it. But you don't know this magic and you're not black. This is a Haitian God. Like, you, you, this is not, not trying to sound like crazy, but this is not meant for you. And Abby, a few weeks later, mysteriously drowned in her bathtub. So, um, some of the, um, some people that, um, I guess some people that's in like into the voodoo and stuff like that, they've reached out to Pogba and they said that he said it wasn't him, that they got her, they got him mistaken with another Iowa named Baron Samri. Excuse me if I pronounce his name wrong. But a lot of people, I've noticed a lot of people get those two confused, Papa and him. Baron is, um, he's another deity, but he is the leader of death. And people somehow believe that he is who she accidentally reached out to or who came, I don't know if it was an accident or if that's who came instead. But y'all, be careful. I get that this stuff is so fascinating and so interesting and it's nothing wrong with wanting to learn something new and to learn a different culture and custom, but you have to be respectful and you got to realize that this stuff is serious. That's what happens when you go poking at stuff that you're not educated on. Stuff like this happens, believe it or not. I am not messing with none of these gods. They are tricksters and not all of them are evil, but you there you gotta think think of it as like because both of these guys papa and baroon they're older so that means they're our ancestors they're wise they're if you go asking for something from them they're not just gonna give it to you they're gonna basically they're gonna make you work not even not work for it but they're not just gonna give it to you they're gonna teach you a lesson they're gonna give you a lesson so don't go don't go dabbling and to things that you're especially that you're not educated and that that's not meant for you but that I just really found this crazy, like this whole situation crazy. Like you thought that you were just going to put a hex on your black girlfriend and every over a Haitian God 
using a Haitian god to kill your or whatever she wanted to do to her black girlfriend. But that 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 was the outcome. That was the outcome. Not saying that she deserved it. I honestly feel like she watched American Horror Story, seen the episodes with Papa Lecba on it, got fascinated with it, and she was already a self-proclaimed Wiccan. You're and you're Wiccan. Like, like I said, there's so many different types of voodoo and magic and stuff like that. Girl, you are not even in the right. This you're not even in the right area. But y'all. Y'all better be careful dealing with some of this stuff just because you're fascinated and look on the internet and find some type of little spell and ritual. No, this stuff is taught. You have to be born into this stuff, y'all. So y'all be careful when dealing with this stuff. I do believe this is true. In fact, here in the Philippines, there are people in the Visayas and Mindanao region who does not get affected by bullets. And even if you try to hit them with um, an axe, a bolo, or a big knife um, it doesn't really affect them I guess the point here is you gotta respect other people's culture just because uh, you don't believe them does not mean it's not true government conspiracy theories that ended up being true conspiracy number one in 1953 the US government started Project Sunshine it was kept secret until about 1956 when people started finding out what was going on. The project was started to measure the devastation that nuclear fallout would do on the human tissue and bones of the dead. The conspiracy theory was that the government was stealing dead bodies to actually do this research. The truth is the government was stealing bodies and to make it worse it was stealing babies and infants without letting the families know that were grieving as these child were dead, the government was taking their limbs. They stole more than 1,500 bodies. But of course, nothing was ever done about it because it's the government. Let me know in the comments what you think about this. This was filmed somewhere over England. Look, that's two moons. That's not one moon, that's two. How is that possible? running for your life but I guess you gotta keep the camera focused right when this video was discovered people really realized underneath the feet of our daily lives there's another world that we don't know about in 2007 Sydney experienced the worst drought in its history the water supply dropped dramatically causing massive water cuts in the city to solve the city's water supply problem to solve the city's water supply problem the government prepared to use two abandoned tunnels two abandoned tunnels buried underneath Sydney during World War II and then and turn them into an underground water recycling system to solve the city's water shortage but half Halfway through the project, the government suddenly and quietly halted the project and closed all the entrances to the tunnels. Since then, they've said nothing about the renovation plan. Shortly after the stoppage, a video was suddenly released on the internet that made the whole incident even more confusing. In the video, a group of young people in order to express their dissatisfaction with the government, they sneaked into the tunnel to paint graffiti in protest. Halfway through the graffiti, suddenly there were strange noises coming from the tunnel. A man went to check it out. He disappeared into the darkness. No matter how much his companion screamed, he didn't respond in the darkness. Shortly after the video was released, Natasha, a reporter who had been following the story. After watching the video, with his keen sense of professionalism, he believed that, that there was a connection to the sudden stoppage of work by the government. Both incidents happened in the tunnel. There must be a big story behind it. But the rest of the team didn't think so. They all think this video was faked for attention, to get attention. In fact, a lot of people on the internet laughed it off. But Natasha still believes in her judgment. He believed there was no way this was a coincidence. A few days later, he went through a lot of trouble. He found a man. A few days later,
later, he went to great lengths to find a homeless man who claimed to have lived in the tunnels. The homeless man told them that the tunnel was huge. It was like an underground city. It was a perfect shelter. But then fewer and fewer people lived there because a lot of people just disappeared. That's all I'm saying. Natasha rushed to show him the graffiti video. But here's the scary part. The homeless man was halfway through the video. Suddenly, he screamed in terror. He was hiding like a ghost. He was desperate to get out of there. His actions shocked everyone. That's when the others realized. Maybe Natasha was right. This tunnel may be hiding a great secret. After reaching a consensus, they soon purchased specialized night vision equipment and waterproof equipment and waterproof equipment. They were ready to explore the mysterious tunnel. They tried to enter through the closed entrance, but they were stopped by government officials. After many attempts, they finally found a maintenance entrance made of plastic material. And then in the dark of night, they pried open a crack to sneak into the tunnel. It was a long walk. It was complicated. The more we walked, the darker it got. With a map, they finally found it. A huge tunnel that had been abandoned for a long time. It's much bigger than they thought. It's much deeper than they thought. And there are many air raid shelters stretching out in all directions. Inside, you can still see some of the later modifications to the living equipment. As they went deeper and deeper, they did see traces of homeless people living here. But why did these people suddenly disappear? Why did the government project suddenly stop? In order to uncover the truth behind. Natasha decided to go into the heart of the tunnel to find the truth, but not long after she went down, what they saw before their eyes completely overturned their perceptions. Wherever you are right now, have you really thought about what's underneath you? What's underneath the land where your house is built? I mean, this does not only apply in Australia. I believe even here in the Philippines, we have places like this. Where are you located? This is the most dangerous place in the world, and if ever decide to visit it, you'll be in grave danger before you even set foot on the land. The danger is not from toxins, dangerous animal or ditty. It's from the indigenous people there called the Sentinelese. They have been there since ancient times and super aggressive to outsiders. The island is called North Sentinel Island, approximately 60 square kilometers in the Indian Ocean and officially part of India, 20 miles from other neighboring islands. Several people have tried to talk to them, but it always ends up badly. So the Indian military keeps a three-mile patrolled zone. In the mid-1977, a cargo ship crashed close to the island, and they noticed some men carrying spears and arrows and were building boats on the beach to come explore the crashed ship. The captain radioed for an urgent drop of firearms so his crew could defend themselves. They did not receive any because a large storm stopped other ships from reaching them and also prevented the islanders from approaching the ship. This is the World's Fair. Yes. yes. This is the picture, and then let me just... Remarkable buildings, and yet, look at the roads. All muddy. Makes you think. Did you know that most of the Canada and United States border is just a cleared strip of forest? Yes, they decided to mark the longest land boundary in the world just that way. For 5,500 miles from the state of Maine to Alaska by simply cutting a 20-foot wide strip of forest wherever there are trees. This deforestation is also known as the slash. The dividing line is also marked by monuments, 
There are about 8,000 of them along the border. All this is done in order to have a physical marking of the border. For example, during a hike, a person can easily identify the boundary. The slash is maintained by the International Boundary Commission, which also removes new trees there every 5-15 years. An interesting fact, the clearing of these trees costs each U.S. taxpayer about 50 cents per year. Unlike the southern border, there are no fences, barriers, or military support, making the border between the USA and Canada the most undefended border in the world. But you can't easily cross the slash there. Residents of the USA and Canada can only cross the border through checkpoints located on major roads. I swear to you, I'm not joking. This actually does happen to a certain extent, and it's real. This slideshow is of course meant to be fictional and entertaining. There's three consecutive slides that show a tree getting up out of the ground and walking. And it closes out with the final slide saying trees may free themselves from their holes if they uproot suddenly, stay calm, and report the incident to the local forest administration. Now, the real life walking tree is located in Central and Southern America, and it's known as the walking palm seen in the photo behind me. What these trees do is move from shade towards sunlight, which is obviously very helpful and necessary for plants to survive. It'll grow its roots towards the sunlight, which is the direction it wants to travel, and the roots that are left in the shade are going to be pulled out of the ground and left to die in the air. And slowly over the course of time, these trees can end up moving locations, though it doesn't literally look like this, where the tree just uproots itself and walks away. Max distance these guys can travel is a few centimeters a day. But still, it's pretty crazy that this does exist in a sense. This might be the craziest and most intense cartel encounter ever. What I'm about to show you is the U.S. Coast Guard raiding a high-speed submarine in the eastern Pacific Ocean moving more than 17,000 pounds of cocaine. On June 18, 2019, a Coast Guard surveillance aircraft tracked the drug-filled narco sub hundreds of miles off the Colombian and Ecuadorian coastline. And the video shows a member of the Coast Guard riding on top of the speeding sub, pounding on the hatch and demanding it to come to a stop. The video then ends with the presumed trafficker emerging from the narco sub, putting his hands up in surrender. In total, five alleged smugglers were seized aboard the vessel. Now, just watch this video. It's absolutely insane and it's something straight out of a video game. <laughs> If cartels have submarines and the government does not want to wage war with them, then it makes you wonder what kind of agreement they have to keep the peace. I will be ending this video with the next clip and I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed the video for today and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Please remember that this is just for entertainment and this is just an outsider's perspective. It's just an opinion and I'd like to hear your thoughts as well. If you like my content, please let me know. If you don't, please let me know what else I can improve on. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.